All right, welcome to Starting Scripture, a uh, reading of the Bible with Katara. And uh, we are on day eight, and we are still in Genesis. Um, We're with the patriarchs, Genesis 16 and 17, Job 5 and 6, and finishing up with Proverbs uh, 1, verses 20 to 33. So again, at the end of each um, reading, so we have our first reading, second reading. We won't always have a second reading, but we'll always have something from either Psalm, uh, Proverbs, or uh, Song of Solomon. So that is where we will start at Genesis uh, 16. Okay. The birth of Ishmael. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had not been able to bear children for him, but she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, the Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abram agreed with Sarai's proposal. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. This happened 10 years after Abram had settled in the land of Canaan. So Abram had sexual relations with Hagar, and she became pregnant. When Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress Sarai with contempt. Then Sarai said to Abram, this is all your fault. I put my servant into your arms, but now that she's pregnant, she treats me with contempt. The Lord will show who's wrong, you or me. Abram replied, look, she is your servant, so deal with her as you see fit. Then Sarai treated Hagar so harshly that she finally ran away. The angel of the Lord found Hagar beside the spring, a uh, spring of water in the wilderness, along the road to Shur. The angel said to her, Hagar, Sarai's servant, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she replied. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her authority. Then he added, I will give you more descendants than you can count. And the angel also said, you are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. You are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has heard your cry of distress. The son of yours will be a wild man, as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. Thereafter, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord who had spoken to her. She said, you are the God who sees me. She also said have I truly seen the one who sees me? So that well was named Bear Laha Roy, which means well of the living one who sees me. It can still be found between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar gave Abram a son and Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. Genesis 17. Abram is now named Abraham. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abram fell down, fell face down on the ground. Then God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I am changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations and kings will be among them. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. And I will give you the entire land of Canaan, where you will now live as a foreigner, to you and your descendants. It will be their possession forever, and I will be their God. The Mark of the Covenant. Then God said to Abraham, your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. You and all your descendants have this continual responsibility. This is the covenant that you and your descendants must keep. Each male among you must be circumcised. You must cut off the flesh of your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between me and you. From generation to generation, every male child must be circumcised in the eighth day after his birth. This applies not only to members of your family, 
but also to the servants born in your household and the foreign-born servants whom you have purchased. All must be circumcised. Your bodies will bear the mark of my everlasting covenant. Any male who fails to be circumcised will be cut off from the covenant family for breaking the covenant. Sarai is named Sarah. Then God said to Abraham, regarding Sarai, your wife, her name will no longer be Sarai. From now on, her name will be Sarah, and I will bless her and give her a son from you, give you a son from her. Yes, I will bless her richly, and she will become the mother of many nations. Kings of nations will be among her descendants. Then Abraham bowed down to the ground, but he laughed to himself in disbelief. How could I become a father at the age of 100, he thought. And how can, how can Sarah have a baby when she is 90 years old? So Abram said to God, may Ishmael live under your special blessing? But God replied, no, Sarah, your wife will give birth to a son for you. You will, call, you will name him Isaac, and I will confirm my covenant with him and his descendants as my everlasting covenant. As for Ishmael, I will bless him also. Just as you have asked, I will make him extremely fruitful and multiply his descendants. He will become the father of 12 princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will be confirmed with Isaac, who will be born to you and Sarah about this time next year. When God had finished speaking, he left Abraham. On the very day, Abraham took his son Ishmael and every male in his household, including those born there and those he had bought. Then he circumcised them, cutting off their foreskins, just as God had told him. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised, and Ishmael, his son, was 13. Both Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised on that same day, along with all the other men and boys of the household, whether they were born there or brought as servants. All were circumcised with him. Now, Job 5. Eliphaz's response continues. Cry for help, but will anyone answer you? Which of the angels will help you? Surely resentment destroys the fool and jealousy kills the simple. I have seen that fools may be successful for the moment, but then su comes sudden disaster. Their children are abandoned far from help. They are crushed in court with no one to defend them. The hungry devour the harvest, even when it is guarded by brambles. The thirsty pant after their wealth. But evil does not spring from the soil, and trouble does not sprout from the earth. People are born for trouble. As readily as sparks fly up from a fire. If I were you, I would go to God and present my case to him. He does Great things too marvelous to understand. He performs countless miracles. He gives rain for the earth and water for the fields. He gives prosperity to the poor and protects those who suffer. He frustrates the plans of schemers so the work of their hands will not succeed. He traps the wise and their own cleverness so their cunning schemes are thwarted. They find it is dark in the daytime and they grope at noon as if it were night. He rescues the poor from cutting words of the strong and rescues them from the clutches of the powerful. And so at last the poor have hope and the snapping jaws of the wicked are shut. But consider the joy of those corrected by God. Do not despise the discipline of the Almighty when you sin. For though he wounds, he also bandages. He strikes, but his hands also heal. From six disasters, he will rescue you. Even in the seventh, he will keep you from evil. He will save you from death in the time of famine and the power of the sword in time of war. You will be safe from slander and have no fear when destruction comes. You will laugh at destruction and famine. Wild animals will not terrify you. You will be at peace with the stones of the field and its wild animals will be at peace with you. You will know that your home is safe. When you survey your possessions, nothing will be missing. You will have many children. Your descendants will be as plentiful as grass. You will go to the grave at a ripe old age, like a sheaf of grain harvested, harvested at the proper time. We have studied life and found all this to be true. Listen to my counsel and apply it to yourself. Job 6, Job's second speech, a response to Eliphaz. Then Job spoke again. 
If my misery could be weighed and my troubles be put to on the scales, they would all outweigh all the sands of the sea. That is why I spoke impulsively, for the Almighty has struck me down with his arrows. Their poison infects my spirit. God's terrors are lined up against me. Don't I have a right to complain? Don't wild donkeys bray when they find no grass? And oxen bellow when they have no food? Don't people complain about unsalted food? Does anyone want the tasteless white of an egg? My appetite disappears when I look at it. I gag at the thought of eating it. Oh, that I might have my request that God would grant my desire. I wish he would crush me. I wish he would reach out his hand and kill me. At least I can take comfort in this. Despite the pain, I have not denied the words of the Holy One. But I don't have the strength to endure. I have nothing to live for. Do I have the strength of a stone? Is my body made of bronze? No, I am utterly helpless, without any chance of success. One should be kind to a fainting friend, but you accuse me without any fear of the Almighty. My brothers, you have proved as unreliable as a seasonal brook that overflows its banks in the spring, when it is swollen with ice and melting snow. But when the hot weather arrives, the water disappears. The brook vanishes in the heat. The caravans turn aside to be refreshed. Caravans turn aside to be refreshed, but there is nothing to drink, so they die. The caravans from Tima search for this water. The travelers from Sheba hope to find it. They count on it, but are disappointed. When they arrive, their hopes are dashed. You too have given no help. You have seen my calamity and you are afraid. But why? Have I ever asked you for a gift? Have I begged for anything of yours for myself? Have I asked you to rescue me from my enemies or to save me from ruthless people? Teach me and I will keep quiet. Show me what I have done wrong. Honest words can be painful, but what are, do your criticisms amount to? Do you think your words are convincing me when you regard me my cry of desperation? You would even send an orphan into slavery or sell a friend? Look at me. Would I lie to your face? Stop assuming my guilt, for I have done no wrong. Do you think I am lying? Don't I know the difference between right and wrong? Now Proverbs 1, 20 to 33. Wisdom shouts in the streets. Wisdom shouts in the streets. She cries out in the public square. She calls to the crowds along the main street, to those gathered in front of the city gate. How long, you simpletons, will you insist on being simple-minded? How long will you mockers relish in your mocking? How long will you fools hate knowledge? Come and listen to my counsel. I share my heart with you and make you wise. I've called you so often, but you wouldn't come. I reached out to you, but you paid no attention. You ignored my advice and rejected the correction I offered. So I will laugh when you are in trouble. I will mock you in disaster overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster engulfs you like a cyclone, and anguish and distress overwhelm you. When they cry for help, I will not answer. Though they anxiously search for me, they will not find me. For they hated knowledge and chose not to fear the Lord. They rejected my advice and paid no attention when I corrected them. Therefore, they must eat the bitter fruit of living their own way, choking on their own schemes. For simpletons turn away from me to death. Fools are destroyed by their own complacency. But all who listen to me will live in peace, untroubled by fear of harm. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Dear Lord, direct our paths this day through your Holy Spirit. Your child, your servant is listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.